Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to explain what IP version 6 is, what advantages it has and why we should use IP version 6 instead of IP version 4. I will also talk about IP version 6 in the network and what's the difference compared to an IP version 4 within that same network. In the description you will be able to find all subjects from the video and the right time for that specific subject. So you can skip to the part of the video that you want. Uh, you will also be able to find all websites with more information on every subject in the description. Here you can see the table of contents. I will start off with some history and after that I will compare both internet protocols to each other. Then I will give you some advantages and examples of an IP version 6 address and after that I will talk about subnets and internal network addressing. And the last thing I want to talk about are the different types of IP version 6 addressing. So let's start off with some history. Before I can explain IP version 6, we will need to know what an IP version 4 is and why we want to change to an IP version 6. So IP version 4 was invented around 1970 as the first version of the internet protocol. It was first shown to the public in 1981 and everyone thought that they would never need to make a new internet protocol. The reason for this was that the IP version 4 had space for over 4 billion addresses. So it was understandable why people thought that they would never need a new version. The computer wasn't very popular at this time either because they were really big and rather slow. About 10 years later the computer became really popular along with some other devices that use the internet. Because of this big increase in devices that use the internet and therefore use an IP address, they predicted in 1992 that all IP addresses would be gone at 2011. Most people believed this and because of that they started to make a new version in 1994, the IP version 6. They wanted to create a new version of the internet protocol with tons of improvements compared to its older version. The plan was to slowly implement IP version 6 and to remove IP version 4 completely. This became a very difficult something because around the year 2000 a lot of new adventures hit the market. Better computers, the Palm, the first smartphones, MP3s with internet capability and many more devices that use the internet. The problem was that all of these devices were made to work on IP version 4 and IP version 4 only. Because of this they couldn't implement the newer version because all of these devices would become useless. Today we can still see the impact from back in the day. 94% of our devices still use IP version 4, but the good news is that most of new devices have the possibility to work with IP version 6. It's hard to say when we can fully switch to IP version 6, but we hope to do it as soon as possible. Some big companies like Google already work with IP version 6, but still support IP version 4. Okay, now that we know everything about the internet protocol's history, let's compare them both head to head. In this table you can see a quick head-to-head -head comparison from both internet protocols. The first difference and the main reason why we want to switch over to IP version 6 is the amount of bits. An IP version 4 address uses 32 bits while an IP version 6 address uses 128 bits. As I mentioned in the history, the 32 bits aren't enough to supply every person with the public IP address. With IP version 6 this isn't a problem anymore. There are enough IP addresses to give multiple public addresses to one person. This is a huge advantage compared to IP version 4. The address is also bigger so more information can be given within the address as well. An IP version 6 address can contain information about server, subnet mask, MAC address and many more. We will talk about these things a little later in this video. One more thing I want to talk about is NIT, which stands for Network Address Translator. Nowadays we still use IP version 4 because we don't have enough public addresses. We use public and private addresses and the public addresses are used to serve the web, while the private addresses are only used within the network. Every device that gets a private IP address will not serve the web with this address. It will use the public IP address which is usually assigned to the router. Here's where NIT kicks in. NIT makes it possible to translate IP version 4 addresses into a public address so that this device can serve the web. Basically, NIT makes it possible to give private IP addresses to every device and make them serve the web. Without NIT, we wouldn't be using IP version 4 today. As we have seen in the previous table, IP version 6 has a lot of advantages over IP version 4. Let's quickly summarize some of them. The first advantage is that IP version 6 doesn't have to use NIT, which I explained earlier in this video. The second advantage is that IP version 6 doesn't need private IP addressing, although we might still use private IP addressing for testing purposes, but I will go into detail about this subject later in this video. IP version 6 is also better at multi-routing compared to IP version 4. It also uses SLAAC, which stands for Stateless Address Auto Configuration. This basically means that an IP version 6 host can configure itself automatically when connected to an IP version 6 network, while an IP version 4 has to be configured manually. With IP version 6, there is also no need for DHCP since we don't use private addresses. Also, the extension and headers of an IP version 6 address have no limit lengthwise, while an IP version 4 address has a maximum of 40 bytes. This is a huge improvement. 
and an IP version 6 address is also more secure because it's a lot longer than IP version 4 address and it's almost impossible to guess. I've been talking about IP version 6 a lot, but how does an IP version 6 address look like and what are some of the rules? Well, let me explain those. Here you can see an example of an IP version 6 address. As you can see, it's a lot bigger compared to an IP version 4 address. Now, as I said, there are some rules when writing an IP version 6 address, which make it easier to use. The first rule is a group of zeros can be replaced by one zero. This just makes the address a lot shorter and easy to remember. The second rule is that a group of zeros can be replaced by a column. This kind of overrules the first rule, but it makes the address a little shorter. This is how a loopback address looks like in IP version 6. And we can obviously use the previous rule on this address so that it becomes 1. The last rule pretty much explains itself. Basically, every group from the address needs to have a number. Now that you know how an IP version 6 address can be written, we can move on to subnets. There will be some differences within subnets when we use IP version 6. The first one is the subnet mask. As you can see in the table, an IP version 6 address looks very different from an IP version 4. The subnet mask contains the IP version 6 address followed by slash 64 or slash 112. Both of these will be converted into a hexadecimal number and this number will then be placed in the middle of the address. This means that an IP version 6 address can be divided into three parts. A network address, a subnet and a unique device address. The first 48 bits from an IP version 6 address will determine the network's address. When you receive an IP version 6 address from your provider, this address will be the same for pretty much everyone within the same region. The next 16 bits will determine the subnet address. The subnet address and the network address together will give you the subnet mask from the network. And the last 64 bits will form the unique device address. Our next thing on the list is internal network addressing or ULA when talking about IP version 6. I will go over this very quickly because internal or private network addressing isn't really needed for IP version 6 because all devices can have a public address. Most people only see one reason for using private addressing with IP version 6 and that is for testing purposes. Most companies will have to change a lot about their systems when we will fully switch to IP version 6. Because of this companies can use private addressing for testing purposes and for making their systems ready for the switch to IP version 6. Besides that, there aren't any advantages to private networking with IP version 6 anyway. The last thing we're going to talk about are the different types of IP version 6 addresses. These are the types that exist. A unicast address, an anycast address and a multicast address. Let's start off with a unicast address. A unicast address is connected to one network interface as you can see on the picture. The internet protocol will send a package to a unicast address if it only wants to reach one specific interface. You also have global unicast addresses, these are basically the same as public IP versions for addresses. A unicast address can also be split up into different parts like we have seen with subnets. This is how a unicast address looks like. We have a total of 128 bits, 48 or more bits are used for the routing prefix. A routing prefix is a network address that you receive from your provider. Then we have 16 bits or less, these are used for the subnet ID or basically the host. And the last 64 bits are used for the interface identifier. We now know what a unicast address is, so let's move on to an anycast address. An anycast address is connected to a group of interfaces as shown on the picture. When a package is sent to an anycast address, it will only reach one interface, usually the closest. An anycast address looks a lot like a unicast address. The only difference can be seen when they are side of a network. The anycast address will be connected to multiple interfaces, while a unicast will only be connected to one interface. An anycast address is usually used when a host wants to send a package but it doesn't matter which host receives it. An anycast address has some big advantages. The most important one is that when a couple of servers are providing a service on the same anycast address and one of them would turn off, there won't be any noticeable difference because it can use the BGP or the border gateway protocol. This is the most important routing protocol for the internet. Basically what it does is the following, it exchanges routing and reachability information between autonomous systems on the internet. Because of this, the other server will be able to provide their services even though one of them is down. There is also a negative side to an anycast address, which is that a receiving host can change its session when they already have a connection. Because of this, an anycast address can best not be used with TCP but with UDP. The last address I'm going to talk about is a multicast address. When we use IP version 4, this address was called the broadcast address. A multicast address is connected to different interfaces like the anycast address, but when a package is sent to a multicast address, it will be sent to all connected interfaces. A multicast address looks a bit different from the other addresses. 
It also has 128 bit, but it only uses 8 bits for the prefix, 4 bits for FLG, 4 bits for SC, and 112 for the group ID. The prefix only uses 8 bits and is always equal to 8 ones. One more thing about a multicast address is that it can be sent to different scopes to reach the right host. Now I'm not gonna talk about this in this video because it would make this video too long, but if you want to know more about this subject, then you can click the link in the description. This is everything for this video, I can go on for a while when talking about IP version 6, but it's better if you learn it yourself. The sites can be found in the description if you are interested in more, and I want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks again for watching, and I hopefully see you in my next video.